Okay, so in today's video, something quite overdue. This Bluetooth speaker I've um, completed about half a year ago and I've meant to make a video on it. I have the footage of the insides and completely forgot to take footage of the of the finished product, right? And so here it is. Already got some dings on the cone. Uh, this I've actually made today. Um, so yeah, this is how it looks. It's a margarine box I got for free at a store. You were supposed to get like one of many items and this was the highest quality one. I do not eat margarine, so yeah, what the hell. Made a speaker out of it. Um, yeah, so let's turn it on. This has a CSR A64215 uh, bare bones breakout module. Would not recommend using it simply because now there are uh, more integrated modules that have an isolation transformer. Not really needed, but it does, uh, in this case at least, but it does make the, uh, the build a lot easier. At the cost of some efficiency, of course. So I'll include links to, to all the shit down in the description, of course. Um, I've also programmed the, the module, so this bare bones breakout has ROM version 8. If you don't know what I'm talking about, probably doesn't concern you, but it was a pain in the ass to, uh, to program. Uh, the firmware has some bug, right? I would assume, right? Otherwise, it's my fault, so yeah. Uh, the problem with this was uh, it was very difficult to have it boot up and then automatically reconnect to the previously paired device, right? So it would turn on and just stay there. And you'd have to connect manually with your phone to it, which is absolutely unacceptable. So that took a long while this summer to fix, but now it's fixed. Um, the edge, you can see, is quite, uh, there's quite the gap here. I've filled this in with uh, sanitary silicone in white. And the gap's so large because the speaker actually is touching on the bottom, right? So it was a bit too large for this, but yeah. Also took like half an hour to drill through this wood. It is incredibly strong. Um, and that is pretty much all. So I reprogrammed the flashing of the LED, uh, the tones, and the name. And miscellaneous bits and bobs around the place to make it auto-connect. Right now it does auto-connect. I'll uh, link in the PSR dump for this as well, obviously. Uh, do make sure you have only flash it to this barebone module or similar modules or have at least a backup because yeah, plus, given that this is ROM 8, you'll probably have a hard time flashing the, the software. Flashing the entire settings dump to a newer module. However, what you can do is perhaps flash the config tool dump, right? So PS tool makes a complete clone of all the settings. Config tool makes a clone of only the user land settings, right? So only the sounds it makes, the name it has, simple stuff, right? Anyway, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. So let's turn it on. I've made it beep very subtly, so. And the second beep is when it's connected. So I do have it connected over here. Uh, let's have a quick listen. And that is the problem I'm having with it. Um, what I think is happening is the booster cannot supply a steady enough uh, supply of current to the amplifier, so it craps out, right? The problem I'm having is this enclosure is rather small, so I'm putting a lot of power into this driver and getting little movement. Right, so at the very highest peaks, I think the supply voltage of the amp is falling enough for it to clip out, right? Yeah, I, have, I would have to test it with a very solid supply, which would mean ungluing this, which is absolutely never gonna happen. It has the two lithium ion cells inside, those last for ages, right? So this is not gonna need reopening anytime soon.
All right, and um, just as an unfair comparison, the Bose Soundlink Mini. Uh, for my taste, this has way too much bass, right? So keep in mind, this was using the Rock Equalizer on iPhones, which is basically a peak around the lows and a peak around the highs and a depression in the mids. Uh, this is rather unsuited for this speaker, which has a huge, huge bias on the low end. But anyway, let's just give it a shot. So yeah, I hope that um, explained roughly right, portrayed roughly how this sounds. It's not a bad sounding speaker, it's rather weak, right, so you definitely don't want to take this outside. Uh, if you would want to make one, I would suggest getting a larger margarine box, so bigger than Daria's hands, that's for sure. But this one also doesn't work too bad, right. And the two lithium ion cells is a bit overkill, but anyway. So I'll cut back to myself from uh, summer of 2018, so half a year ago and I'll go over how I built it and the parts I chosen. All right. Okay, so this is uh, the speaker before it was built into the case. Uh, it actually had a uh, separate switch, so this is the case before assembly, and uh, it's pretty hollow at, at the moment. And so what we have here is, uh, is a pack of two 18650s, just uh, common together. Uh, and that's very good because you can use the, I think, 4056, TP4056 chips, if I'm not mistaken. And these are very good uh, charging chips. They're highly inefficient given that they're linear, but yeah, it's fine. And they're very good for charging this. Now, this, now mine has a, a little heat sink epoxied on top of it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't add much, but it looks very cool. And I've also... Uh, let's see if we can lift this up. I've added a little resistor there and that is around 500 ohms on the set pin and I removed the the one that was there. I think it was 1.2k the one that was there and this should increase the current up to like 1.7 amps. It actually never goes that high because it enters uh, thermal protection. So but it does charge quicker. So without the the extra mod it would charge the 2p pack at I think it was 600 or 800 milliamps, which is 400 milliamps at most per cell. These are around about 2,000 milliamps each, so it's going to take quite a time, right? So now it's 1.2 amps ish. I did see it go up to 1.8 once, but it never did it again. I mean, I don't know. I only charged this pack once, so again. Anyway, so roughly 600 to 800 milliamps per cell, which is quite a bit better, anyway. Um, yeah, so what else? So I'm going basically right into this this boost converter, and then paralleled with that is the actual Bluetooth module. So this is connected right across the cells, actually. Uh, you might have noticed that there's a blob here, See if I can lift this up sufficiently. So, and that is because the uh, protection circuit of this module is too sensitive. And you might look at this capacitor and say, oh yeah, that's why. But no, even without this capacitor, even with no capacitance on the input of this boost converter, the charge, sur the charge current, the surge current, when it starts uh, ramping up this voltage, it's set to 15 volts. So from 4 or 3.5 to 15, quite a bit, right? It does say in the data sheet that it has some soft startup, but it's not soft enough for this module. In operation, it's mostly fine, but at power up, it always trips this, so you can't really use it. Which brings the question how of, of how I'm going to handle the um, low battery, and it's not that elegant. So the plan at the moment is uh, this will beep at low and critical battery and basically the user is mandated in this case to stop using the speaker because at some point right at around 2.5 volts or let's say it's 2 volts or whatever this will stop working at which point it will stop disabling this module I'm not sure how low this will go I actually should test this out I haven't gotten around to it 
but this theoretically can drop the cells down to zero volts, which again is not that problematic. It's more folklore than reality that it's disastrous. It's not really that bad, but it's really not recommended anyway. So I don't know, that's not that good. I'm not going to be using this speaker too much. And I don't know, once it beeps annoyingly, at some point you should stop using it. But yeah, basically you have this uh, yellow wire, which uh, has gotten itself a bit tangled. And this is connected to PIO 17 and you can set these in the config tool to do whatever. And PIO 17 is set to be high, which is, I think it's 2.8 or some shit, or 2.5 volts, I think. Uh, so it's 2.5 volts when music is playing and zero when music is not playing, right? Basically, whenever you hit play, this will go high, this will turn the boost converter on, which will power the amp on. You could use the mute or the sleep uh, thing on, on this amp, right? This is a TPA3110, but it's really not worth it. And plus, I think this amp on standby uses less current than this boost converter on, on like quiescent current. So the best thing is just to chop basically all of this off. And it's, it's absolutely fine. So you can power this on and off rapidly. It's completely silent, no thumps, no nothing. It works perfectly. And this is how the back of the, the speaker looks. I've basically used sanitary silicone around the seal, around the lip. I actually haven't used any on the actual lip, so just around it, to not have any anything drip on this side. And it seems to be holding very fine, right? I mean, I am yanking on it quite vigorously and there's absolutely no budge. So I'm hoping that will hold up fine. Yeah, so that's pretty much pretty much the hardware. Oh yeah, so uh, these TPA3110 amps have uh, single-ended inputs. Uh, the ones from China, at least this module. Um, I do have differential outputs coming out of this though. So what I have is basically left and uh, right positive going via a, I think, 100 or 300 ohm resistor to a single point and then through a capacitor to the uh, positive differential input of the amp. So you actually have to remove a few resistors here. Uh, you could check the pin out of this, uh, of this chip and then it all should be fine. And I also epoxied it here so that uh, I don't pull off the, the traces. And it says that they're going to be at 3 volts, or, or I measured it, but I think it does say it in the data sheet. The differential inputs of this, this amp are at 3 volts or something. So that's probably not going to go super well with the, uh, with the CSRA64215 module, the Bluetooth module. So I have them going through just any random capacitor I could find. I actually have no idea what these are. I think they're 1 microfarad, but they might be even less. I mean, it's, it's fine. You can correct the sound with the equalizer anyway, so nah, I did that completely by ear and this time it worked superbly, so I have no mentions. And yeah, so basically both the positives are commoned via some resistors going to the common input, to the positive differential input, and then both the negatives are common and going to the negative differential input is, is how this works. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And I'm running this at 15 volts because, I don't know, that's basically minimized the quiescent current of the whole system, which, yeah, it's about 10 milliamps, it's about 100 milliamps, sorry, and if you have, uh, I think, 20 volts or 26 volts, which is actually the maximum, you can use up to 200 milliamps, which is really not that useful because I could not notice absolutely any gain. Uh, this actually has some power limiting circuitry built in here so I mean I don't know there's barely any difference it's still I'm still capping the volume in the CSR to not uh, bottom out the the speaker and to not get this into the popping mode get it to hard clip so it's it's fine at 15 volts you get enough power for one of these speakers all right